Ohio Valley Search and Rescue Incorporated was organized in August of 1991 to help serve the tri-state communities of southwestern Indiana, southeastern Illinois, and north central Kentucky. When requested by authorities, trained search and rescue members assist with land and water searches for trapped or missing people. The following documentary, produced by Junior Megan Stewart, looks at the inner workings of Ohio Valley Search and Rescue and the roles that members take during a search. My name's uh, Buffy Horseman. I've been with Ohio Valley a uh, little over 18 years. They are in their 25th year this year come August. Uh, we are a local search team going within usually 100 miles of the Evansville area made up of all volunteer members. Uh, it's an all-volunteer team and we are certified through NASAR which is the National Association of Search and Rescue and the, uh, you go through a weekend long test. There's a written test, there's uh, ropes, there's uh, man tracking, there's a navigational course, there's uh, two clue searches that you have to pass in order to be certified. You have to be certified as a searcher yourself before you can even train or before you can even test your canine if you're a canine handler. We have on the team we have what we call ground pounders who don't have canines but who support, do support in actual uh, when we do the searches. We have radio people who handle radios. We have a home base who takes care of, of us where we're at at all times so we don't get lost. Like I said before, we are called out by either the police department or the sheriff's department depending on who is in charge of the actual search and it all works together. Like we might go out as a team and have uh, the local fire department may be part of the team. Uh, it all comes together as, and it's just not the dog team, it's a, whole, it's a whole group of people that are actually in the search. A lot of volunteers will sometimes join in, it depends on the search and how big it is and what's all involved. Uh, people, a lot of people don't understand uh, the best time for a canine to work is early morning when the scent's closer to the ground or in late evening or right at dusk because that's when the scent for the canine is the best. High noon with a, a high sun there's very little scent for a dog, a canine to pick up so it's not real good at that time to work a dog. Uh, and most of the time the searches that we do go on uh, the, if the subject goes missing, then the family's out looking for him, and then they might call the local sheriff, and then they're looking for him, and then they get bigger, and usually it's dark when they really get worried, so that's normally when we get called out. Okay, my name is Tom Bartley. I've been a member of the team for 12 years. We get a, a tone out or a call out through a group meet, which is like a text group message, and we respond if we can come or not via that and then we're dispatched to the scene where we meet with the search manager who then gives instructions for areas to search. Uh, we have maps printed out in most cases and then we're assigned a certain area to search and clear. Uh, we have to uh, sign in of course to make sure everybody's accounted for so when we leave uh, we're aware that everyone's out of the field. Different teams are assigned certain areas and uh, we have a dog and what we call support people, which is what I'm one of. My responsibility is for navigation, uh, along with communication with the radio. As the dog handlers, they're dealing with the dog and that's pretty much a full-time position. Uh, we're kind of the eyes and ears of the team to be looking, searching left to right, uh, behind us as we move, uh, and anything that we might think may uh, be deemed something we could use for the team to help locate the uh, article search of you know clothing or something like that. We have weekly trainings, uh, most of them are through the day, but there are times where we have night trainings. Uh, we meet uh, different locations throughout the area here, USI, uh, Company 7, which is the old night township fire department, and sometimes uh, bluegrass or another area like that. And we have at times what's called a mock search where we send a victim out. We sign, like I said, for the real search. We have an um, area that's assigned to each team. They're sent out with the dog and support staff again and uh, to clear the area. 
if it's something that's not cleared in an adequate time, we bring in a second team to, to do so. My name is Lori Wassmer and um, I have been with Ohio Vice Search and Rescue for 10 years. And um, the reason I got involved with uh, the search and rescue was because I've always had a lot of um, interest in training dogs and I've had them all my life. And I wanted to do something worthwhile with that training other than just simply agility or something like that that is fun, but yet I wanted to do something that was worthwhile. So I felt like the search and rescue was an area that uh, I could be a benefit to help the community. I mean, we just basically, we just expand on the dog's natural ability of, of, of a prey drive. All dogs naturally hunt. That's what they're, they're born to do is hunt. So all we're doing is rewarding them for hunting for what we're asking them to hunt for. So when we first start the dogs out, we'll do what we call runaways. And they'll actually see the missing subject, have their toy or have the treat, and they'll see that subject walk just a few feet away and then the handler will you know give them their command to go search and when they get there it's a party I mean it's they've done the best thing that you could ever want them to do they get rewarded with their toy or their treat whichever one that they're that they're um, you know driven for and then we just kind of expand that over time the runaways get longer um, you'll add in distractions that the dog has to work through um, and then you also you'll work up to where it's actually a blind search where they no longer actually see that victim go away and they actually just have to go search and that's when they actually start air scenting because what you've taught them to do in the runaways is to find that that human subject and they get rewarded well, when it goes to a blind search that's when you see that dog start thinking and smelling the the scent of the person my name is Patty Bartley and I'm with Ohio Valley Search and Rescue and I've been a member for about 12 years now. We have many, many tools. Um, first off, you're going to use your eyes and your ears in the field to watch and listen for anything that um, clues a uh, person yelling. Um, then we're going to go to our more physical equipment, which would be our radios, which we can stay in contact with, the people that are back at base, with each other in the field. Uh, then we have many other pieces that we use um, in our equipment bags, which is going to be our medical. We always take water with us um, for us and for either canines or subjects that we may locate that needs to be watered. Um, compass. One of the most important things that we carry because we can always get our direction of where we need to go back to if we get lost out in the woods which can happen also. Um, we have a flashlight. We always carry a flashlight. Uh, even during the day sometimes you need a flashlight to look into sewers or enclosed places. We always carry a whistle. That whistle can be used, one, to have our dogs come back to us, two, we're also, if we get far away from our other searchers, which we always have someone with us, we never go alone, so if there is um, a need, we can whistle, and then we know where each other is at that point. And we always carry a walking stick. They are used for many different things. One is to keep our balance out in the woods. Uh, another is if we're getting into a muddy area, we can always use this to see how deep it is or how deep water is and it helps us get up hills very well.